that in mind as well. And thanks, Glenn. And feel free to turn off your camera if you're more comfortable with that. So then on the next slide, uh, this just gives you a brief overview of what we'll be doing today. Um, this session will be delivered by me. I'm Joe Sachs Eldridge, the program lead. Lucy Barlow, our wonderful selection manager, is here to go through the um, selection pro process and the criteria. We also have Bruno Marcurio, our digital transformation manager, on the call, on hand to answer any other questions. And we've got Glenn keeping an eye on the time for us. Um, so I'm going to give you a very brief overview of the impact program and what it'll look like. And then Lucy's going to be going through that detail of the questions and what we're looking for for each of those different sections. So the next slide then is, um, if you didn't attend the session last week, and I hope lots of you did, I do recommend that you watch it um, to get an understanding of our thinking around the impact program. Very briefly, why we offer it is because we know that this stage, the developing stage, is incredibly challenging. And we define the developing stage as being beyond pilot, where you're delivering your solution, you're ready to grow, um, and you've been faced with all of these challenges because we know that growth comes in lots of different forms. You're scaling deep or scaling out, you're building your organization, you're growing your team, you're trying to build relationships with other stakeholders, you're seeking to change the political or legal or cultural system with, within which all of that exists. And you're often doing all of that at the same time. And then at the center of it all is also you who needs to keep going, needs to be resilient. And you need to give yourself attention as well to ensure you're able to keep going. So the, the program is very much based around tailored supports based on your individual needs and your individual goals. So the next slide gives that overview of the, the kind of approach we take. Um, essentially, it's a, it's a nine month program. We work with five organizations over those nine months. We deliver um, a mixture of individual and group supports um, all, as I said, tailored around your individual needs and the, the, the needs of the group. Uh, we also have this incredible community around us who can deliver those supports, be they supporters, alumni, um, uh, consultants. And then we also give you 20,000 euros in unrestricted funding, which we trust you to invest in whatever part of the business or whatever part of your organization you feel needs it most. Um, at the, on the next slide, sorry, Lucy, the eligibility, um, we thought it worth going through a couple of these just because some of the questions focused on these last week. Um, and it's worth remembering when it comes to the eligibility, you need to meet every single one of those. So read them all and make sure you can tick yes to every one of them before you go any further. Um, as I said last week, we are business model agnostic. We welcome a whole range of different legal structures, um, not-for-profits and for-profits, including DACs, CLGs, companies limited by shares, um, cooperatives, sole traders, and charities. Um, the key for us is that you are at the stage where you've taken that step where you've assessed the options out there and you've figured out which model works best for you and that you've committed to it. So it's not so much what it is, but but that you've done it. Um, similarly, around on the next slide, there uh, is the around decision making, because that's also really important for us, because the impact program only works if we're working with the main decision maker in the organization so that any any advice or learning that comes from the program can be actioned by you and of course we understand that many of you will have a board of directors who need to approve those decisions but we need to know that ultimately you or if you're in a partnership your partnership are the ones leading on it so that doesn't necessarily exclude any organizations who might sit under another organization, 
But if you do sit under another organisation, we need to understand what that relationship is and how much autonomy you have within that. And we may even, as part of the selection process, contact that parent organisation and get clarity on that decision-making and that autonomy. Um, then on the governance, um, if you've been into the application, you'll see that we've got an entire section devoted to governance where we ask you things like the details of your board, your relationship with other organisations. We also ask for figures around the number of staff, the number of beneficiaries, your income. And I just really wanted to emphasise that this is purely so that we can get a really full picture of your organisation. This section is not part of the scoring. Um, and it's fine if you don't have a board. It's fine if you've got a really small board. There's no right or wrong answer. This is just to, to ensure that, yeah, we have that, that full picture when we go to assess the applications. That's my bit. I'm now going to hand you over to Lucy, who is going to talk you through the selection process itself and the, the six criteria. Thanks, Lucy. Great. Thanks a million, Jo. Um, hi, everyone. As Jo mentioned, I'm the selection manager at Social Entrepreneurs Ireland. And um, yeah, we uh, we this is the first year we're doing an application webinar and we really just want this to be something where you guys can feel you've learned something and hopefully facilitate you in your um in your application writing and also to just make the process a little bit less daunting and hopefully enjoyable. Um, so just to give you a really brief overview of the selection process, I also talked about this in the information session, so you can look back on that as well. Um, but once all applications are submitted, our review process will scan span from the 7th of May until the 7th of June. We employ a really rigorous set review process at SEI, um, so it includes internal reviewers, but also external reviewers made up of our supporters, uh, social sector experts, alumni, and professionals with other business experience. This is really important to remember because if you don't make it onto the program, the feedback that you receive is from a really diverse set of experts. So it's really, really valuable to um, request feedback and take a look at what people, um, where people maybe felt feel you fell short. Um, following this, 40... Um, applicants will be invited to take part in our assessment workshops. These will take place on the 25th of June in Dublin and the 2nd of July in a location to be confirmed very, very soon. Um, this will be a full day commitment and uh, those selected will be given an option to select their preference, but we have to emphasize that not everyone will get their first choice. Uh, following the assessment, and just to highlight what the assessment workshops are, is um, they're replacing uh, previous first round interviews. And we're really incorporating them this year because we want to get a more meaningful engagement with applicants, getting to know them better through individual and group workshops. Um, but really giving something back to you as applicants who may be traveling from all over Ireland to take part and you know really giving something for you to learn from but also a network and meeting like-minded people and um, yeah and then following the assessment workshops 15 applicants will be chosen to take part in our final interview on the 25th of July in Dublin. So just to go through the Gold Grants platform which is where you submit your applications all applications have to be submitted through this platform and um, you can access the platform via the applicant guide, via our homepage, and also on the impact program page on our website. Some questions that frequently come up about Good Grants are, how can you link evidence in those questions where we have asked for maybe some supporting evidence to highlight the scale of your problem? So I'm just gonna give you three options of how you can link evidence. Um, the first option is if you are typing something that you want to support evidence with, you can say, for instance, Social Entrepreneurs Ireland. You can highlight the text, click this link icon, and in the brackets, you can insert the link. When you do this, it'll only take three words from your word count. The second option is you can just type Social Entrepreneurs Ireland and in brackets, put the link. This option gives takes four words of your word count. 
And the so the final one is a footnote option, which is where you put the one and at the later stage you can at the bottom of the text box you can put the link. But this takes six words. So I would probably avoid using the last option. And I would mention the word count as it's really important to stay within the word count because the platform will not let you submit your application if you go over any of the word counts. Um, and just to mention on voice recordings, uh, so once you choose to do written or voice recording, you will have to do that for the rest of the application. Uh, Bruno uh, is going to give a list of options of how, what type of files you can upload for voice recordings. And also um, there are where we've asked for some evidence, there are text boxes where you can put links to the evidence that you're talking about in your voice recording. And just a really important thing to mention as well, we will only listen to the first two minutes of every voice recording. So we've given a max limit of two minutes, but if you go over that, we won't, re we won't be looking at the anything beyond two minutes. So it's really important to get all the information in that you want us to hear in those two minutes. And um, so that's kind of it from Good Grants. Um, moving on to our evaluation criteria. Um, so this might be familiar to a lot of you at this stage as it's all over our applicant guide and it's really what and our um, application questions. This is new to our selection this year and we have developed these criteria based on past selection analysis. Through those analysis, we found that these are the key things that we are seeking in our social entrepreneurs for our programs. But we've also developed them in a way to help you to describe your story, where you are, how you got to this point, and really how you see your solution changing Ireland, or at least changing it in a significant way. So they're here to facilitate you as well as to provide us with a framework for assessing you. So I'm gonna dial straight into them and the questions. And just to remember that after each criteria, which has either one or two or three questions, we'll give the space to you guys to ask some questions if I haven't covered some information and you feel like you still wanna know about something, please feel free to unmute and ask us a question. As Joe mentioned, this is a really open space and we're here to support you. So yeah, just, just unmute when you want to. Um, so yeah, spirit of a social entrepreneur. So the first question here is, what is motivating you to solve the social or environmental problem you have identified? Here, we're really, really looking for your passion and your drive to solving this social or environmental problem. What has inspired you to, you know, see that this is a problem, but also give you the motivation to start tackling it? It's really important that we understand your motivation because developing a social business is no easy feat. And we need to see at some level that you're, you have the ability to, and motivation to overcome challenges and drive lasting social change in Ireland. So for the second question, how do your life, work, educational experiences and strengths make you the right person to bring about this change? So in this part of the question, we're really looking to understand how your expertise and experiences have led you to be the right person to bring about this change. So that could be anything from your personal experiences, but also professional, academic, educational, voluntary experiences that have given you skills and experiences that make you more confident and capable of tackling this problem. So really we're looking to hear about anything and everything here, um, but it's really important to highlight how they're specific to the problem that you're currently addressing. So if it's the environment, how do your experiences make you well suited to contribute to environmental solutions? Or if it's a community-based project, how have you worked with communities in the past? Or how have you worked with groups? Why are you the right person to bring communities together to start tackling this problem? Um, that's kind of 
it. And I, I really want to emphasize as well, we've provided some prompts with some questions and it's really important to read those prompts to help you to provide us with the best possible answers and really get that sense of what you're trying to do with your problem and solution. So I'm gonna offer the floor to applicants now to ask any questions they might have on this section um, or uh, my SEI staff, if you want to include anything else. May I ask a question, Lucy? Yes, of course. Sorry, Caroline here. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering, um, we say um, Reskill Ireland is uh, my organisation and we've um, done some work with some some ladies to help with their, their confidence in that. And we've got some unbelievable um, feedback. Would we include that in the application or? Yeah, so I'm going to be talking about where is a good place to actually include that feedback. Um, this this part of the, the this criteria is really looking about you um, and why you're here what your motivation is, what your drive is, and your experiences. And in another part of the um, application, where I will be describing where that feedback will be really, really important for us to see. Is that okay? Perfect. Thanks a million. Great. Thank you, Caroline. And Lucy, just to come in there, then I think it's it's challenging. I don't know if it's an Irish thing to talk about yourself. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and then of course so many of us work with um so many amazing people um as you know as our previous question just asked so it's it's you kind of feel uncomfortable talking about yourself when you know you work with others and that it's a team effort and but that's what you're saying that you just want to profile one individual in this particular instance or, or a partnership yes. but, yeah Joe, go and ahead. I, I think i think as part of this question we have to um deal with our imposter syndrome um and yes we yes we are the right person for this because we're the ones doing it that's really worth remembering as well that you don't have to have all the qualifications to do this but you are the one doing it and and what strengths do you bring to that great if everyone's happy, I might move on to the next section, but please, if anyone has any other questions. Lucy, um, sorry yeah. to interrupt. We have a question from Catherine. Great. Um, Joe, would you mind? Catherine, uh, I don't know if you, if you want to unmute yourself. Uh, greetings, I'm actually in the um, Archer Clinic, so if it's okay, I just put it in the text box. I was just wondering oh. about the waiting. Well, I was wondering about the waiting for each of the criteria. Thanks a million. Great. Um, yeah, actually, for the impact program, all of the uh, criteria are weighted the exact same um, because at the impact program stage, we see each of these criteria as just as important as the next. Um, for some of our other programs, let's say the earlier stages, uh, steps to growth and solution evolution wouldn't be as important. But um, at the impact program stage, everything is weighted the exact same. Okay. Can I ask a question? Of course. Yeah, I think this is the right place to ask it in relation to if you're working with other people and uh, particularly one other person. So you really need in in that case you really want to um present yourself as a partnership uh -huh. and 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 sort of uh explain the the strength and the, the passion that that drives us as as a partnership is that yeah. right yeah if you are applying as a partnership in this section we would like to hear about both of you um but then if you want to talk about the strengths of the team and the and the wider network around you there is a section later where you can fill in that information because we we also understand that it's not it's not you're not a lone ranger you're not doing this on your own that mm -hmm. there is um that you do have other supports 
So you would recommend that in that section about the spirit of the social entrepreneur that we put in effectively two biogs or two if you're applying, yeah, sorry, Teresa. If you're applying as a partnership, then we want to hear about both of you. Okay. That's a really good question. Thank you, Teresa. Hi, could I ask a question? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just want to clarify something. Um, my project is at idea stage. I have no legal um entity set up as yet. Okay. Am I in the right place? Unfortunately, having being set up as a with a legal structure, with a recognized legal structure or as a sole trader is a key eligibility criterion. Um, and it, you might just be at that too early of a stage. Um, but if you want to reach out to me directly um, at applications at socialentrepreneurs.ie, uh, one of my colleagues will put the uh, email in the chat box and we can have a conversation around that. And um, there will be a recording of this event if you if you don't feel you want to stay part of it in case you're not ready. And um, so just, yeah, that, that there's that option there for you. So um, just to clarify, um, so if I was set up as a sole trader, um, will this program help me develop and fine tune my idea to launch? So that would be the Ideas Academy stage. Ideas Academy. So I'm in the wrong place, really. Yeah, I think I think so. But um, again, if you want to reach out, um, we can we can t I can give you um, more comprehensive information uh, via email or over the phone. So it's applications at socialentrepreneurs.ie. Thank and you. You might put that in the chat for me. Thank you very much. Maybe and I can come in as well here. If I can. Yeah. Uh, I'm uh, like the last lady. Um, I was about to set up the limited company, but I actually held until I piloted, and I've actually piloted the program now, and I want to expand it. Um, and now I'm in a better position to choose what uh, what type of company I will go for. Um, so uh, the question is, I have piloted, I've got the feedback, I want to expand it. Um, perhaps I just go ahead now and set up the the company. But the the thing is, will I have it done in time in terms of the application? Because I say I've gone through the idea stage, I've gone through the piloting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the thing is, um, sorry, because I have to get through a lot of the content for the criteria here. Yeah, I think it would be best if any questions regarding the eligibility criteria, you reach out to that email. Um, that will be posted in the chat and I can give you um, the right information around whether you're eligible or not for the program. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Okay, brilliant. Brilliant. Um, I might move on to the next criteria now, okay. um, just so we can, uh, as there's quite a bit to get through. Um, but if anyone has any other questions on this section, um, you can ask it at the next uh, after the next criteria as well. So, so our next criteria is solution fit. This is um, a really, really important section of the application as it's understanding what your social or environmental problem is and also the solution that you have adapt, developed to address the problem. So for the first question, we at Social Entrepreneurs Ireland believe that a viable solution hinges on an in-depth understanding of the problem. So a clear and effective problem statement lays the foundation for a clear and effective solution. So we can't emphasize enough really providing that clear and concrete problem statement. And there's a couple of ways that you can do this um, specifically at the impact program stage as well. We are looking for you to talk about the broader and broader problem and the specific problem that you hope to address. And this is because we don't believe that any one organization can solve one broad problem, but everyone can try to make a diff to tackle a more specific problem. So we're really looking for that information and evidence around the broader problem, but 
really the specific problem that your solution hopes to address. It's really important to also be very clear on your target audience. So who are you hoping to benefit or what part of the environment are you hoping to help? Another really key part of this question is highlighting the scale of it. So highlighting the scale of the social or environmental problem you are hoping to tackle. This really helps us understand why it needs to be tackled now. And ways to do this is prov providing research or evidence from the internet or from anywhere that you can find to highlight how this problem is presenting itself in Ireland today. We understand that some problems may be very unique and might not have a lot of research around them. And if this is the case, that's absolutely fine. We just need you to highlight that there's a lack of research and that you're presenting personal or anecdotal evidence because of that. And just to highlight that anecdotal evidence is personal observational evidence. So this could be from your own personal experience or from talking to people who are experiencing the problem. But at every level, it's just really important to try and address and present evidence of the problem. So another really important part of this question is presenting obstacles. Every problem has its own unique set of obstacles to solving it. There's probably a multitude that are follow each problem. So we're not looking for you to explain all of them but we do want you to explain at least the most important ones because understanding these obstacles helps you to develop a viable solution because you know what challenges you're going to have to overcome to make it effective. Obstacles could be a range of things and will be unique to each problem, but they may include a lack of services such as government services or, or it could be cultural or attitudinal barriers there are a long list of barriers and obstacles that will be unique to each problem. Um, and it's just really important to understand those for your solutions viability. So we just wanna highlight that weak answers here will be when there is an unclear alignment with a social mission. This occurs when there isn't enough evidence to explain how this problem is presenting itself in Ireland. An unclear problem statement also makes it really difficult for us to assess the viability of your solution. And another pitfall here would be explaining the broad problem too much and not focusing on the specific aspect of it. So I just want to move on to the second part of this, which is describing the solution that you've developed to address the problem. And in this answer, we want you to include how it addresses the key obstacles you outlined. And also, if your solution includes a number of different elements, please explain how each one targets the problem. So in this part of the question, we're really looking for the solution fit. How does your proposed solution tackle the problem you've identified? We want you to explain how the solution targets your target audience and how it aims to benefit them. We recommend trying to showcase an appetite for this solution. And ways of doing this is showing how your target audience have engaged with maybe similar solutions elsewhere, or maybe conversations you've already had with people, or maybe you've been delivering this for a while and you know people want to, want to engage with this solution. Another valuable way to demonstrate the viability of your solution and the potential effectiveness of it is to highlight how it's worked. Similar solutions have worked in other organizations or other countries, but it's really important to always remember to present your unique approach in the Irish context. And we just want to highlight that um, weak answers here again will really be when there isn't enough detail around what your solution is doing or how it is addressing these key obstacles or the uh, target audience because then we just struggle to understand the solution fit and people who have applied to us before feedback will generally
be around that piece that we couldn't understand how the solution directly addresses the problem. So that's it for me. A lot of information on this section. Um, but yeah, just to give it to the floor and hope uh, anyone feels they can um, ask some questions here. Uh, William here with a question. Great. Sorry, just on section B in there, if your solution is at two levels, level one is the initial uh, solution, but you need to establish level one before you move on to level two, which is uh, uh, solving the bigger issue. Do you layer it in that respect and explain it in that respect? Do you understand how you present it? Do yes. you present the big pro um I guess it's it's up to whatever makes the most sense. So uh, if you want to set out the broader problem first and then identify the specific aspect of it that you are addressing, um that makes yeah, whatever whatever makes it the most coherent. And again, I would recommend uh, getting somebody else to read it and somebody who doesn't, who isn't familiar with your solution and making sure that they can understand it before you submit it. Okay, thank you very much. Great, thank you, William. Any other questions at this stage? Okay, if not... Um. Yeah. Lucy, before we move on, I think just um, to give uh, also a good feedback for, for people applying, uh, sometimes mm -hmm. what happens is that, um, so the, the main reason for us to, to understand the solution fit here is that, as Lucy said, we want to understand, to understand if you are familiar, understand the problem, and then understand the, how your solution can solve that problem. What happens sometimes is that uh, uh, some applicants, they answer, about their solution on the first question. Uh, so when we ask about the, the problem itself and uh, we just ask for people to not kind of uh, um, um, mention the solution in the first question because we just want to understand if you understand the problem that you are trying to solve. And then you have the opportunity to explain the solution on the second, on the question B here. Uh, so just make sure that um, you you have the space for you to to really explain what is the problem and then what is the solution. Yeah, that's a really, really good point. Thank you, Bruno. Um, great. I'm going to move on to the next criteria if there are no other questions. Great. So solution evolution. So the first question is, please demonstrate how your solution has evolved. We really want to hear about everything here. You may have seen from the prompts we included in this section. It's all about conversations you've had, lessons learned, failures. How have these led you to the solution you're at right now? And how have pilots that you've done before or prototypes also led you to where you're at now? It could involve absolutely anything from, you know, when this solution started <laughs> to where it is now. And really have fun with this question because I'm sure, you know, there's been stages that you've had a failure and you've questioned, is this what I need to be doing? Is this the right solution? Am I on the right track? And it's all of those kind of things that we're really, really excited to hear about because we know that the social entrepreneur journey is not straightforward in any sense of the word. It is all over the place. So we want to hear about all of the, the good and the bad, basically. Um, but yeah, in this section, from an assessment point of view, we're really looking for your ability to reflect and learn and iterate. So even though you might have come to a very solid solution now, as we know, we live in an ever-changing world, so we need to see that you have the ability to consistently iterate to what your target audience need. So for question B, please explain the outcomes of the delivery of your solution, the impact you've had so far, and how you've measured it. Again, this is a really important 
section and question for you to show us that your solution is effective and that you are benefiting your target audience or the environment. And um, Catherine, I think it was from Rescale Ireland, asked me about the feedback that you've received from some of your target beneficiaries. This is the perfect time to explain that feedback. Um, so we're looking for you know, the outcomes of the delivery. So that could be anything, any outcome that you've observed that gives you confidence that this solution is working at some level. Um, the impact that you have achieved can include anything from qualitative to quantitative, to personal feedback, to anecdotal evidence. But we really wanna emphasize here that the more evidence that you can give us, the better. Because at the end of it, the day when we are making decisions, we are going to have to make decisions based on who's, based on everything put together, but really on the evidence that shows that this solution is working or has the potential to work down the line. And that will really be based on the evidence that you can provide us. So I can't emphasize that enough to really throw in everything you can to show us that this, this is working. And yeah, explaining how you're measuring it is also really, really important because, you know, you might have a story about someone or some really good feedback, but how did you find that feedback? Was it surveys? Was it focus groups? You know, anything that you can provide will really, really strengthen your answer at this point. And yeah, a weak answer for this one would just be really little evidence. So only one piece of evidence that's not enough for us to understand the effectiveness of this solution. Um, it's worth emphasizing as well that you you should assume that we might uh, not be familiar with either the problem that you're tackling or the solution that you're delivering. So the more you can tell us about it, the better. Um, we might not know what the needs of your beneficiaries are or your target market are. Um, and I think a key word is, is confidence. Why are you now confident in the solution you are now delivering? What, what are you basing that confidence on? Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Joe. So we're gonna put it to the floor now. Um, if anyone has any questions on this section, um, please feel free to ask us. We have a couple of minutes for some questions on this section. or if there's anything in the- Hi, Maria. Um, I think you are muted. Uh, we cannot hear you. No, we still cannot hear you. <laughs> if you want to send this question in the chat, we can read it. Maybe we'll we'll keep going, just we're, we're tight on time. Tight on time, yeah, great. Um. We will come back to that question, Maria, once you've put it into the chat. Um, great. So we are now on our fourth characteristic, um, steps to growth. Um, this question is all about uh, <laughs> how, you, how you plan to grow your organization within the next two to three years, um, but also how you've been funding your uh, organization. And also this is the perfect time to, when people were asking, when can we talk about our team? Um, I think that's really lovely that everyone wants to talk about their team or people that they're working with, because I think it's such an important part of any business, but particularly social businesses, which can be really tough to run. Um, so this is Steps to Growth. Please describe your current organizational structure. So this is all about who is supporting you and how. As I said, we know as social entrepreneurs, it's really important to have people to lean on, but also to have other skills that you can use and utilize for your organization. So we wanna know all about your current organizational structure here, your team, the skills that you have, but it's also really important at this stage to highlight where the weaknesses are. So where do you need to develop what weaknesses are currently in your organization that, you know, 
if you were to develop them, could really benefit your you, <laughs> you and your solution moving forward. So the means by which you currently fund the delivery of your solution, including personal finances, traded income, grants, loans and donations, and your current expenses. As some of you may have seen on the application form, this is put into a table. Um, so you don't actually have to explain anything here, but it's more about the figures that are leading to the delivery of your solution and your current expenses. We really know that it's so difficult to fund an organization in its early years. So, you know, the level of your operations is less important here. We just really want you to be clear on the figures that are leading, that are funding your organization and the current expenses that you currently have within your organization. So for employees and um, uh, anything else that you need for your for your solution. Um, and personal finances, we see a lot of social entrepreneurs at the beginning stages, but they're putting their own money into it. So just let us know what, what's leading to your solution working and your organization being funded. So C is all about acknowledging the challenges for growing. We want you to tell us about the practical growth you envision for your team and organization within the next two years and the steps you need to take to achieve this growth. So scaling comes in different forms for everyone. We don't expect anyone to grow exponentially in the next two to three years. We just really want to see your vision for growth and the direction that you need to take to do that. So this could be in here, we're looking for explanations of how you will support that growth, how you continue to measure your impact, how you will continue to grow your team, how you will implement policies and processes to, to grow your team, and how you will continue delivering your solution or how you will iterate your solution as in, within the next few to three years. Um, it could really include anything that just shows us how you are planning to grow in a practical two to three years. Um, and something to be aware of here, we're just looking for clarity. Uh, don't worry about exp over explaining, just be really clear on that vision of growth. There's actually a question missing here. So I'm very sorry about that. Um, in Steps to Growth, we also have a question on how you plan to fund that growth. Um, so yeah, that will be question D. And it's just we again want to hear about anything that you think you will need to achieve the growth that you've explained in question C. Um, so how you plan to receive more grants or yeah, just where you see money coming in to help that growth. Um, so I'm going to end there. If SEI team have anything else to say on that, that'd be great. Or if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask me now. Thing just to say, we we appreciate that this question is particularly hard because it's a real fine balance between realism and your what's practically possible, but also demonstrating that you have ambition. Um, and we understand that. And yeah, we can't make it any easier for you because that's what you have to do. But we we appreciate how difficult that is. Uh, William here. Yeah, I will. Um, do, is there a is there a ability for us to attach spreadsheets at this stage? No, we don't actually have anything. The application doesn't allow for in additional attachments. Um, but I don't know, William, if you've seen the layout of your current expenses and how you fund your organization. Yeah, we 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 have that tracked, and going forward, it's just the two to three year steps is easier to explain on a spreadsheet. That's all I was just asking for. Okay. There is a, there is a table on the form, William. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, rather rather than having to explain it in, in words, we just want to see those figures. Great. Thank you. Great. I'm quite conscious of time, so I'm just going to move on to the next section, ask for some Great. questions, and then do the final one, and then hopefully we'll have some time for questions at the end. And if we need to go five minutes over time for anyone who has a question, that's also okay. Um, so the fifth characteristic is social change. And um, this is 
an exciting question, I find, because it's really a chance for you to demonstrate your vision for an Ireland where this problem doesn't exist. Um, and yeah, just really to highlight your visionary your visionary aspects and kind of maybe to hopefully inspire yourself as well. Um, so in the first section, though, uh, we want you to show your understanding of the system, the key stakeholders and how your solution enhances what others are doing or fills a gap. So this is really important for us to get an, a sense of your understanding of the market that you are working in. Being able to understand how your solution offers something different or enhances what others are doing or fills a gap is really, really important for you to know your unique value and how you can tackle the problem in a different way to what other organizations might be missing. So we recommend stating what other similar organizations are doing to tackle this problem and then highlighting how you complement this or how you fill a gap. You may also talk you may also find that there is no one organization tackling a similar problem to you or the same problem as yourself. But it's really important to try and look at any organization in a similar sector because there's always someone, as we were talking about the broader problem, trying to solve some aspect of the problem. And knowing how you are different to that is still really important in identifying how you, your solution and organization might be effective. But here we're also really curious to know if you've been having any conversations with key stakeholders or if you've been collaborating or making connections with other similar organizations that you see as necessary to driving lasting social change. So yeah, in this question, just look at how you are filling a gap or enhancing other solutions and any conversations or collaborations you've made so far. So in question B, Imagine the problem you've identified has been solved or significantly changed in Ireland. What would that look like? So we want to be inspired by your vision and we want you to be inspired by your vision. It's really important to try and highlight anything that you see as necessary to making significant change in Ireland. You can think about how the problem would look or how Ireland would look if your problem was solved for your beneficiaries. What key stakeholders would be working together to create lasting social change? How would governments or institutions have changed to bring about lasting social change for your problem? Just think of anything that you think necessary to bring about change and talk about it to us. But yeah, we're just looking for you to feel inspired by yourself, if anything, in this question. But we do need to see that visionary aspect um, for driving that change. So I'm just going to finish up there and put, uh, ask if anyone has any questions on this. Well, and just to, to emphasize again with that section B, we're, we, we aren't necessarily looking for only changes that you are going to bring about. This is changes in, in wider society that, that could happen within the next 10 years where, where your problem has been solved or the problem you're tackling has been solved. Um, and back to, to section A of this, I see it as a kind of um, a collective dance with other stakeholders, and that's the, what we want to understand. Who 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 else is out there, and and how are you dancing with them, or how would you like to dance with them in the future? I love that. Thank you, Joe. Any questions at this stage? Great. Well, if no one has a question right now. I'm going to move on to the final criteria and then just give some overall advice and then we can open the floor up to some final questions that people might have. Um, so thank you. And Social Entrepreneurs Ireland Program Fit. So again, this is um, another really important criteria, just as important as the other ones. Um, it's all about why, why you and the impact program. So for the first question, why do you feel like now is the right time for you to apply to the impact program? We really want to understand why you think you at this current stage in your organization can benefit from the impact program. Do you have the time and capacity to commit to this nine month program and engage with all the supports that are on offer as there are individual and group supports? So we need, we need to understand that, you know, 
our investment is going to be worth it, but also that you feel that your investment is going to be worth it. For section B, what do you aim to achieve by the end of the nine month, pro nine month program for both you personally and your organization? What would success look like? So in this section or question, we really want to see that you've got a deep understanding of what the program can offer. So reading the applicant guide is your first port of call here and deeply understanding what the outcomes you can potentially achieve are for you and your organization. We really want to, you to highlight the goals that you could you see yourself achieving throughout this program. And we know that those goals might change if you are selected for the program. So don't think we'll hold, hold you to them. It's just really for us to get a sense that you know what taking part in this program will help you and your organization to achieve because that's a huge, it's a really, it's a nine month program. So we need to know that you know what you're investing in and that you have a real understanding of what you want to get out of the program. I'm gonna give uh, Joe, the program manager, also a chance to say anything here if I've missed it in terms of the SEI program fit. Um, one of the things we've we've learned as well is how important the the, the group dynamics are and the peer supports and that um, being willing to really engage and embrace the opportunity that being within that group can offer, whether you're leaning in for support or whether you're being leaned on for support, both are really important. And we want to know that you are willing to, to do both, to be vulnerable and to support other people. Um, it's, a, it's a really impactful program having having witnessed the, the growth in the organizations that have taken part this year we've seen them grow in very different ways but we've seen them all grow um and so i would really encourage you to to apply for the program it's it can be um really um huge huge it could be a huge impact for you and and the organization um so yeah and if you have any more questions, we'd love to hear them. Are there any questions? I think I might have seen someone raise their hand, Bruno. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, oh, I could see Sean. It's Sean, yeah. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. How you doing, Joe? Joe, we just have a question in relation to the actual program itself and what the time commitment is. And as a busy um entrepreneur who has lots on i'm just wondering what the what is the time frame for the nine months and is it like full-time part-time is it flexible what way does it work so in the thanks for your question sean in the eligibility criteria we uh, request that you be working a minimum of 20 hours a week on your organization and then in addition to that we suggest that you um have capacity for around two to four days a month to put into the program. It's probably works out at less than that. Depends, of course, how many supports you're looking for and how many supports we can find to meet the needs that you present. Um, but those two to four days might be a mixture of uh, a monthly call with me, uh, individual supports with maybe a, a mentor or a, an alumni who you can connect with. It might be... Um, a group session, an info session with the group. It might be um, a more reflective session with the group. Um, there might be a survey that we need you to fill in. It could be a variety of different activities during each month, um, but all of them are really crucial to be, being fully part of the programme. Yeah, that's really good. And so if, say for instance, and this is just like, I'm not, I don't even know whether, you know, it's it's a fifth for me, but this is just I'm thinking of. So say if you're running a business and you've contracts with different organisations and you're in on a Wednesday and a Thursday all day, and then the this program is on. What's the what's the situation with flexibility? That's what I mean. So in in August, with the five organisations that are selected, we'll have what we call a, a discovery period. And during that discovery period, we get to know more about you and your organization and we meet your team and we find out what days work for you and what days don't. So during that 
period, we will set up our monthly calls based on when you're available. And then as a group, we'll also come together and look at what days work for everybody for those group sessions. Will they only work online? Can we do some in person? It's all built around the needs of the people on the on the program. Yeah, that's that's brilliant. Thanks. That explains that explains the what I was wondering. So thank you very much, Joe. Thanks, Sean. Um, I'm just realizing we're coming to time here. So I know some people might need to knock off. Um, so thank you so much for everyone for coming. Um, and I really hope this has been helpful at some level. Um, I'm just going to move to some overall advice and we'll open up for some final questions. Um, but completely understand if people need to head um, at this point. Um, so just some overall advice. We can't uh, overemphasize enough reading the applicant guide thoroughly to understand what the program has on offer, what's required of you as a program participant. And yeah, just our evaluation criteria and really getting an understanding of what we're looking for in those. And um, as Joe had mentioned earlier, getting that fresh perspective is really, really important. A lot of the time, as we have a diverse range of reviewers, not everyone is gonna understand your problem. So it's really important to explain that problem in simple language and getting someone to review your application, a family member, a colleague, a friend can really help you understand if you are explaining it in, a, in an easy to understand way. Um, a really important thing is providing detailed answers. If answers do not provide enough detail, we won't be accepting that applicant for a review stage because we won't be able to understand what it is you're doing or trying to achieve. It's not to say that every answer needs to fill the word count because we don't expect that either, but it's to say that every answer needs to provide enough detail around what you're doing, the impact you're achieving, your vision for growth, how you are different to other organization or filling gaps. Everything that I've explained and Joe as well, it, it just, there needs to be that level of detail. Otherwise we, we, we can't consider applications with no, with very, very little detail. And um, AI is obviously a new thing in all of our lives. And um, so we just really want to mention that while it can facilitate writing for some people, we really, really, really want to hear your unique voice and perspective. So please remember to maybe if you want to use it, that's fine, but always maintain your unique perspective and yeah, that passion for why you're trying to solve this social problem or environmental. And finally, don't leave it until the last minute to apply. Don't cause yourself stress. Start now and work on it throughout the next couple of weeks and submit it on time and just feel good about that. And that is it for me. And um, if there's any questions, I can see two hands up. So um, I think Martina's went up first. So I'm going to open. Martina, if you want to ask your question there. Yes, I have a very simple question. I've been online to look at your application form, which is just a yes, no set of answers. Do we have... Do we follow the, the six boxes in a free form or is there another application form into which we, we fill the information? Um, hi, Martina, uh, Bruno here. I think probably what you were seeing is just the eligibility uh, questions. Yes, uh, that's all. So once you have submitted that and if you are eligible, you're gonna be able to see the rest of the form. So you don't have the visibility of the form until you check your eligibility for the, for the program. So we Indeed. submit that um, yeah. and we save and next. So does, that, so does it go through automatically? Yeah, so instead of clicking saving next, there is a button there, uh, check your eligibility. Yes. So click that and then once, like if all your answers are kind of, uh, um, yeah. like if you are eligible, yes. you're gonna be able to see the rest of the form. Right, and then we get a response through email yeah. uh, I will see the actual form then. Yeah, exactly. All right. Okay, thank you. Great. Thank you, Martina. And Jacinta? Yes, maybe just a question. I'm hearing you to really want thoughtful answers, and I appreciate absolutely the need for that. From experience, how, long, how many hours are, do you think will be needed to fill out the application form to the level that you require? It's a very tough question, Jacinta. Yeah. Um, 
that depends on so many different things. I don't know if we'd be able to answer that. Yeah, I think, I, I, Bruno, I think we've kind of given an estimation in previous years of five to six hours. Uh, am I right in saying that? Yeah, but I think, yeah, like Joe said, it, it might depend on a lot of different things. So like some people, they might have already some of the answers because they apply to a different program that asks kind of similar questions. Um, and uh, so it's going to be quicker for them. Uh, so I think, yeah, like it's difficult for us to give us to give you an exact estimation of of it. But just to say, like there, like we still have, let's say, um, is it three, four weeks? Uh, for four, weeks. Four, four weeks. Four weeks to, to, to complete. Um, so yeah, you still have enough time. Like you take it slowly if you want. Just have a kind of a look at the the applications. Uh, and then, yeah, you have enough time to to complete it. Yeah, and Jacinda, I just want to highlight. Um, I know I we were trying to reach each other yesterday. Um, so please feel free to give me an email, and I can give you a call and just um go through any questions you may have that um haven't been answered here today, or maybe another one that you had uh previously, if that suits. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, Any other questions? Catherine? Yeah. Can you hear me? Hi. Um, Catherine from Cork. Hi, Catherine. Hi. Um, I don't know if you guys, and I didn't write until last night when I was going through it, that it's actually 2023 guide, and I couldn't find a 2024 guide. Do you have any new guides for 2024? We do, and it's on the Impact Programme page of our website. Which, okay. Bruno, are you able to put that in the chat? That's, That's fine, fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Could you just remind me of the date, the final date for the, for the application, please? The, 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 the submission? Yes. So it's the 24th of April at midnight. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you, Lee. Catherine? Brilliant. Thank you, Catherine. Um, so we've got a bit over time. <laughs> um, Any other questions before we run? Thank you all for coming, and I'm, I know I am very excited to read your applications. I'm sure Lucy and Bruno and the rest of the team are too, so please do get them in and do get in touch if we haven't answered your questions today. Thank you Thanks so much, everyone. We'll end this Thank session. you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck. Bye. Bye. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs>